Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the internet, and welcome to Finalysis, Avatar The Last Airbender. I'm Callum, this is Evan. Hello, everyone. Welcome. And today we're talking about book three, episode 14 and 15, The Boiling Rock. Yes, this is a a two-parter episode, but the reason this review is going to be covering both episodes is not only because one obviously flows directly into the other in terms of storytelling, but also... Interestingly enough, when I rewatched this episode on Netflix, it's actually packaged as a single 45-minute episode online, despite the fact that it still has the title cards for part one and two. Why they did that when the finale is still broken up into multiple episodes is unclear to me, but it does sort of also make me theorize that maybe this was actually originally developed as as a single episode, but they just had way too much material to cram it in, so they probably just broke it up into two. Could be a possibility. Yeah, it certainly plays like it could all have been one episode originally by design. Um, one of the issues I have with this one is that it kind of re- slightly repeats itself in style a bit, but we'll get to that in a bit. Um, essentially, summary of the episode, it's a prison break, um, and we'll get through bit by bit as we usually do. But we open up with the gang uh, drinking tea, and Zuko trying desperately to tell a very... Well, to be honest, what isn't a very good joke to begin with by the sounds of it, um, but obviously told through <laughs> his poor memory and reasonably poor imitation of Iroh uh, made even worse. Um, it's going to be a trend for the rest of the episode. With the be, yeah, yeah, and it's going to be a trend for the rest of this episode where he's trying to imitate his uncle a little bit more, um, as he has in other episodes uh, as well, and it's not mm-hmm. not quite pulling pulling off, uh, bless him. But, uh, but yeah, Sokka asks Zuko, after this little moment, um, where he thinks that the war prisoners of the Fire Nation will be taken, mm-hmm. and, uh, and Zuko mentions that it's going to be the Boiling Rock Q credits for the episode. Um, Very good continuity from the Eclipse, obviously, because, you know, a lot of the, you know, Water Nation forces were obviously, you know, captured at the end of that. So I like how, you know, that is such a major plot point in the sense of it just kind of further highlights just how big of an impact that, you know, special in particular in in the midseason had on just the greater world, because, you know, it really goes without saying that that was a historic battle in every sense of the word. And the fact that they are... We are obviously still keeping with our our usual crew, you know, even for this episode and beyond, obviously. But the fact that they still are keeping to that continuity is just very refreshing to see. And again, I I know I've mentioned this in past reviews for this season, but one of the storytelling elements that I think this season really does well, particularly, I would say, even in, in this half, is just, you know, writing every little bit of um, continuity out before we get to the main finale, which, you know, any good, you know, end of uh, series should do. But again, just seeing that play out in such a natural way, particularly here, even though we both agree that the pacing of this episode isn't necessarily the best in how it is structured. But um, again, it's just another one of those little details that would be great to see because I feel like in there are some other shows where if you had something like this, it would just kind of be written off. It's like, oh yeah, you know, dad eventually managed to escape and now he's back with us, hooray. But no, they didn't take the quote unquote lazy route and again it just it just shows why this uh show succeeds on so many levels yeah it gets points for using that continuity as a a reason for a soccer centric episode you know and getting some of the old faces Mm -hmm. we've seen before involved i also appreciated the fact that it noted that the it's a high security prison and some of the lesser the Mm -hmm. non-leaders of the group that were captured were kept elsewhere not not only is that a nice little nod for the sake of world building which isn't that important but still good but more importantly it gives you a narrative (laughs) reason for why we haven't got to get all of these characters involved in this episode and follow-ups it keeps it small to just the uh the escape of soccer's dad and uh hakoda and um suki suki mm-hmm. um plus uh, i guess i also um, yeah oh, what's his name um what's the prison name chitzang chitzang the prison itself um, oh yeah uh, so he <laughs> hi i'm new, we get a new we get, very end. yeah we get get some new new characters in this episode but also just building off what, what you said before about you know how the the cast is structured in this you really could only tell a prison break story when you don't have people like Aang and Toph and even mm, Guitar around. Because exactly, at that point, yeah. you're just dealing with characters who are just so powerful. If, even Appa, for, for Pete's sake. Like, this <laughs> would, it would be over very quickly. Not that Zuko and Sokka aren't extremely capable themselves, obviously. But just reducing the cast in this way makes sense. And it doesn't necessarily come off as cheap as, cheap as I think it usually would have because you obviously understand Sokka's reasoning and bear in mind Sokka went on this mission not even expecting Zuko to be with him so it plays out a lot more naturally and when it comes to prison break stories and and again just one more thing I want to 
really mention before we get into the nitty gritty of, you know, what goes on in these episodes is that in terms of just themes and structure, you know, this, these two episodes really obviously lean heavily into a lot of tropes seen in, you know, various films and TV, like over the decades, you know, Shawshank Redemption, Escape from Alcatraz, Cool Hand Luke, The Great Escape. If you've seen any of those forms of media, you can tell straight away that the writers were, you know, influenced, not even on the, you know, the most obvious level of it being a prison, but also a lot of the tropes, a lot of the plans, you know, the way they escape. I mean, very clearly, you know, those pieces of medium influence this. But what I like about it, and again, it just one of the biggest strengths of this franchise as a whole is taking elements that we are familiar with and not only adding their um, own sort of spin to it, but also incorporating the elements already established into the world to the point where it makes sense and it doesn't really feel tired. So, and again, I, I know I'm talking this episode up quite a bit, and you know I think we should both establish. I mean, these, these aren't bad episodes; they really no, aren't, absolutely but not, absolutely not. They're, they're, I think there'll be few people's favorites unless you have a particular yeah. you're particular fans of Suki. Um, um, yeah, but it's it's not um doing anything particularly wrong you know it, it's striking all of the beats They're that you expect extre- it to, extremely working with the style yeah, yeah working with the style well um i mean we talked about previous episodes kind of hyping up on an existing tropes and and, and styles like mm-hmm. the biggest one um probably off the top of my head would puppet master playing into that horror theme mm-hmm. um this is uh this is another one that kind of takes that takes that and runs with it, it goes okay that's that's mm-hmm. think about what we enjoy about prison breaks um movies and, and shows and let's play that into our own setting um and they do it well mm-hmm. um and if you do love those those types of media then you'll love these episodes yes yeah they do a good job with it but yeah getting back into the nitty-gritty of the actual episode itself we start off with a joke obviously and then zuko explaining to Sokka where he thinks his father might have been taken or at least at this point, he doesn't actually know it's for his father. He just knows it's generally war prisoners. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, and mentions the boiling rock. Sokka tries to sneak away. Zuko goes with him. They leave an amusing note <laughs> in the fall. <laughs> just gone fishing. Literally. They just gone fishing. That's the note they leave. Um, and apparently the gang buys that. Um, not that they have a big yeah, choice it... at the moment because they don't know where they've gone. Mm-hmm. It's a bit of a loose, uh, loose hanging thread, but who cares? You know, it, it mm-hmm. does the job. It's a very, yeah, it's a very obvious sort of trying to smooth over over the fact that we don't want these characters coming yeah. to help them otherwise it would be over too quickly yeah it's, it's like you said at the start it was a good thing to raise this would be a just pointless set of episodes if they had ang and or toff present i mean it would just be oh a prison boom prison's destroyed <laughs> or, or move, yeah. all open we're free job done so it was a good yeah. job there. i mean even zuko has to, has to nerf himself pretty severely Mm. Uh, at various points in order to go with Sokka's plan. I mean, I, I honestly have very little doubt that Zuko could have probably broken out of this place or even destroyed it. If, if well, apart from anything was, else, thematically, it's, a prison goal, to, you know? it's in prison to, to yeah. hold firebenders as well. So, you know, it's, it's with the mess true. involved and everything, it's designed to do that. So it's uh, even true, most yes. airbenders are probably pretty restricted here. Um, but it's just, it's funny mm-hmm. that they got them out of the way, that got them out and of the have, way that quickly. Yeah. And we have... Uh, and we scene... also haven't established that metal bending is a thing yet. So Yeah, yeah exactly. They're not aware of that. So they're, they're still playing with those the old rules. But um, but yeah, we get the wonderfully awkward uh, small... Small talk between Zuko and Sokka on the war balloon <laughs> with the infamous <laughs> "That's rough, buddy" line as uh, as he yes. mentions his girlfriend turns into the moon. I like the um what they do to kind of not humanize it's the wrong word that we've done that, but just get a bit more of the um camaraderie and and casual tone mm-hmm. into the episode throughout this one. Um, Sokka and Zuko are getting some small talk throughout this that they've not had a chance to get up to this point, so it's cool to explore that and, mm-hmm. and just have fun with it because. With an with, as of any show that you only have the twenty minutes, but particularly one with as high octane as Avatar, you tends to be you don't get that much time to spend just in quiet moments and having the characters share some simple dialogue. So every time you do get mm-hmm. it, it's, it's appreciated. And they always, and I think I find that they're the best humor they have is worked into these moments as well, rather than the average. Mm-hmm. Scene. Well, it also really shows that despite having very very different base personalities. Um, I would, you know, Sokka and Zuko, when they're like in like, you know, mission mode actually have quite a few, you know, similar quirks going for them, which, you know, makes a lot of sense, actually, when you consider their, you know, both were very much raised, you know, with a warrior's mentality, obviously specific to their cultures. But um, I, I, again, little, like you said, little touches like that really showcase that these two together, and we even see it later on when they're actually in combat together are pretty formidable when they're mm. you know got their you know heads together and, and i like that we'll and, return uh, to that point again, at the end because that's something i want to raise yeah. with the final fight it's a very good one between those two um 
But, I have a feeling I know what you're going to yeah. think, so I'm, I'm all there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really good scene. But yeah, but the Warbling crashes, they they um, they um have a conversation about the fact that the so- Zuko never thinks things through and Sokka always does. And, you know, that's, uh, that's something that they have to come also, to terms with. Also, kind of pushing the balloon into, into in the between. water. Yes, yeah. Love that. Like, well, I just, just the whole aspect of the planning and, and the, what they're watching out for and keeping on top of it is it's satisfying throughout the entire story. Obviously, it's still still kids show and it's still twenty minute a piece, so it's not like mm-hmm. they're going into great detail and complexity. But they they cover a right. lot of the, of the simple bases quite nicely. One thing they don't do though, and, and well, first things they that they do is establish the balance between the two, pushing between the idea of planning too much and planning too little. And not only is that a good thing by itself as a, as a kind of attention point to to develop as growth throughout the episodes, but they specifically tie it to the mm-hmm. fact that Sokka is coming off the back of the invasion, a, a moment where he specifically didn't decide to cut his losses. And that's why he's he's unsure about the balance on that here now. He's, he's thinking, I I didn't do that before, maybe I should now. Um, and, and same with the planning. He's kind of winging it where he, before he planned everything out to the last detail. So mm-hmm. I like the uh, what they introduce here to set up the kind of baseline for the growth and for what, what the characters going to have to learn off each other through this one. Because it's not a major point for the episode, but it's that undercurrent in the background mm-hmm. that keeps getting alluded to. I enjoyed that. First and probably most major plot hole of the episode, though, they just <laughs> teleport into the prison. <laughs> I never really yeah. noticed it before until I was writing the notes, but they ju- it just we just cut from one side of the boiling lake to they're inside the prison, but getting on guard, uh, prison guard um, uniforms. How they crossed, how they got in without um, being caught and infiltrated properly, who knows? We don't spend the time on it, but uh, but I can understand mm-hmm. why they, it was if they planned anything at all, it was cut because again, limited time frame. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they they infiltrate. They've got the guards' uniforms, the classic face uh, expo- um, face covered up because that's how you infiltrate in these shows. <laughs> Rule number one of villainy: yeah, I can't never. See a never... Thing. <laughs> yeah, I the can't stormtrooper see a thing reference. In this exactly. Yeah. Rule number one of villainy: <laughs> never allow enemies to uh, obscure their faces with your guard helmets. It doesn't work. Um, mm-hmm. But they do a little bit of infiltration antics. We get some various scenes where they're kind of establishing the nature of the prison with the with the coolers mm-hmm. and uh, and. And we get some light humor in the guard. Um, Good world building. Yeah, it, it, they establish the, the the presence of the prison and the way it functions quite nicely and mm. quite quickly um, to allow us to kind of get to the whole. This is how the escape's going to work. Because if you don't know how it, how the right. prison itself works, you can't properly enjoy an escape attempt. Um, same as like a heist. Yeah, movie. you've got to understand the, the terrain mm-hmm. before you can properly exploit its rules. Yeah, and what's it, and what I really like about it too, it's like obviously if you have a prison where a majority of the population, we don't know like the exact majority of how many firebenders are, can actually bend that are in this prison. But obviously if you're going to hold people who can do that sort of thing, you need precautions to, 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 you know, um, you know, um, cancel it out. And, you know, that's when we get to things like the coolers and whatnot, because, you know, even if you have guards who can also fire bend, there's still obviously a lot of risk. You can't have them be present 24 seven. So, um, and the fact it also really kind of delves into one of the biggest themes of the fire nation throughout the entire series in the sense of them having more advanced technology at their disposal than any other nation in that sense, they're able to create these tools that, you know, are, you know, tailored toward, you know, countering bending, which you just don't see in other nations. It does make you wonder, though, how other nations do imprison people with, you know, bending capabilities. Like how, like, what are you going to do? You can't put an earth bender, bender in a, in a, you know, prison made of stone, obviously, but, you know, that just kind of, you just get into one wondering things. But again, little, little touches like that, like, they have the technology, they have to use it in this way in order to counteract this specific, you know, trait for this specific person, you know, all of those coalesce. And again, little touches like that make this prison not only feel more real, but, you know, as we get to in a bit, it directly contributes to their ability to eventually escape it. So all of that's just brilliant. And again, it just, um, it goes back to how on a technical level, these two episodes are just pretty i wouldn't say flawless but you know very very well handled in in what they are trying to accomplish yeah absolutely and they do a good job as well of uh humanizing the guards um mostly mm-hmm. for the sake of humor um which i i found worked for me more in this episode than most others for avatar humor as well I and mean, it was a very funny mm-hmm. uh, funny pair of episodes um same with the follow-up with the uh, raiders actually but uh, but yeah. they they humanize the guards to the point where you, it feels like it's a lived in place as well. They can they can have the interactions between the guards and the prisoners, and they can have little mo- like the moments mm-hmm. in the mess hall when they say, "No, you can't date the female guards." <laughs> Trust me, you wouldn't want to. Like, that's that's funny yeah, and natural yeah. dialogue, um, with, but between adults in the show as well, um, which is uh, yeah. not as common for most of the episodes because they're, they're not usually hanging around these people that much. So yeah, I appreciated that. That was really good. 
again, goes back to a lot of those tropes that are seen in a lot of just prison films, you know, you know, mess hall conversations, guards planning, the corrupt, um, you know, um, what, is, what is he called? Um, warden. <laughs> I forgot what, I forgot what a warden was for a second there. <laughs> but again, like it, 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 you know, a lot of it, you know, especially with the warden are like kind of, you know, exaggerated to, you know, sometimes kind of awkward degrees, but again, it just keeps with those tropes that you've seen in like any other prison film. But again, just with, you know, avatar flair, which is great to see. Mm. But, uh, but yeah, we get the kind of first, well, first of all, we've realized that from Sokka's perspective that the, the dad isn't here. Hakoda is not yet in this mm-hmm. prison. We, we talked about it in previous episodes, but it's funny that they've had very little time for them to even arrive because it's only really been, I mean, the implication is in a few weeks is, is the idea that they've obviously trying to conjure in the in the minds of the viewers, but it's only realistically mm-hmm. been a few days in terms of what we've actually seen take place on screen. So uh, it makes sense right. that he hasn't yet arrived here because they've, they've beaten them yeah. to a bunch. Um, but, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, I think we talked about it in one of the, few, one of the earlier episodes. Um, but he does notice that Suki is here, um, which yes. is a, a long time in coming because the last time we saw her and her warriors, they were being taken in in book two by uh, Azula and the mm-hmm. small elite team. So it's nice to have her return. Um, and she proves obviously a main main stay and uh, <laughs> primary character from this point to the end of the finale, actually, now. She's, she's kind of been upgraded from side mm-hmm. character a little bit. Yeah, and when Sokka goes to her cell to try and you know meet her, he, yeah, <laughs> he a, tries to repeat the silly. same thing that she did with him in the uh, previous book, but the context doesn't quite work in his favor. Not <laughs> which, quite, which he should have seen coming, punches. really. Yeah, <laughs> and and as we as we learn in the next part of this of this special, he does not learn his lesson. Uh, he does not. No, he does not. <laughs> Um, Zuko is caught, um, obviously, um, mm-hmm. trying to uh, cover for them as they're interacting in the, in the cell, and uh, and that kind of escalates tension a bit more as uh, as they make the mm-hmm. um, Asoka kind of has to work around that with his restrictions. Um, yeah, and we they also do. Learn they that the the warden is actually, we actually learned that the warden is um, May's uncle. Which yes, is, yeah. Which he, was... he, he cites which he cites that as the reason he recognizes yeah. him. But you think you would think everyone in the fire nation well would yeah for sure does. but 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 i like the fact they use that example or that in, that um point just for the excuse of getting the small elite team involved and particularly may like i like that they they she didn't just turn up because azula happened to be doing an, inspe- an inspection or happened to have a suspicion about someone coming in or, or something like that it was it was a legitimate reason to have those those three involved um naturally within the, mm-hmm. within the script so i thought that was a cool touch um particularly considering the fact they're putting more a- attention on may in this episode than they have um pretty much any other this is one of the rosen- m- moments where she gets to shine a bit um if however mm-hmm. briefly i mean we've spoken before how she's often neglected in the show um but yeah mm-hmm. so that was cool um they come up with a plan a pretty good plan i like the fact that this is something that makes sense and, and could have worked in other circumstances but unfortunately Wait. as they are about to uh, implement it they find out that there is a prison uh exchange kind of happening and there's more arriving um which obviously soccer is deciding whether or not to stick around and think of, and find out if it's his mm-hmm. dad i like the the Again, I go back to what I mentioned before, the um question in his mind of should we cut our losses, you know, and also the specific question he asks, is it right for me to risk Suki's freedom over this? And that's a really nice question for him to bring up um and 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 kind of answer for himself. And obviously it's, it's taken out of his hands by Zuko and Suki anyway afterwards. But it shows just how much Saka cares and how much he takes his responsibilities within like the leadership role um seriously. Um, I like that because if he'd just gone, oh, we can stay behind now and just ignore the fact that he's com- potentially compromising his entire his, right. his, his girlfriend's entire life um, with this situation, um, you know, it, it wouldn't have played right. So I like that. Um, and mm. yeah, they ultimately stay behind. Plan fails anyway because they <laughs> decide to row across a metal uh, a metal lake with a metal paddle, which is not the smartest move in the world. Um, and they get yeah, caught. which is which again the, the the way the plan itself in theory does make sense because the coolers obviously are heat resistant so it could take being on the water but the reason that Chitsang rips a piece off and uses it as an or like you would think you would think he'd be able to use like blasts of fire to propel himself or just be patient and wait to be yeah, either way it would have, it would have revealed their presence but yeah. yeah which is another thing we should also like establish like this prison is located you know on a volcano and it's surrounded by a 
constantly boiling, you know, lake of water, hence boiling rock and all that. Um, how they made that is a little <laughs> unclear. Like, like, did it already? Like, I don't know. Like, it, it, but again, obviously, it's a great visual and it's a very interesting effect. I also like very subtle, but I it, it make I like how they establish. Like, obviously, if you're in a metal tube surrounded by water, that's boiling hot obviously the tube is going to get hot yeah even with the insulation they're they're sweating yeah it's again it's not a big deal but small details like that in in the show really do shine Mm -hmm. because others will just ignore it you know the cartoon world Mm -hmm. rarely takes that kind of thing into consideration so um yeah the more of that we see the more we appreciate the show and and the way they yeah and the way they capture by the way they capture them using a giant harpoon gun that yeah. to reel them back which by the way which by the way is that that's not efficient it only has one shot so it's a good thing that guy who was who was aiming it apparently has like some really good aim because but, but also like the idea it, that they're prepared it. Like, for that's it that's not efficient at all but also that they've got they're prepared for this exact contingency as well how many situations would that have been useful in preventing escape <laughs> you know, so sure, but, it was funny but, that but, they had the but, exact tool for the yeah. job on station but but that closes out um with the, with the arrival of hakoda um like stepping off the gondola that closes out in a in a nice dramatic moment the end of um of mm-hmm. episode one or part one rather of the two-parter mm-hmm. and and uh and yeah it, it, it would open back up into part two with the warden giving a speech kind of this is uh almost how they would have started the episode if they'd had to have just one part and this would be the kind of the opening essentially mm-hmm. establishing the sense of the, the prison they did something similar with the earth um prisoners um in book one um had that this kind of mm-hmm. same sort of vibe it calls to that in the style and and uh approach uh, at least it did in my opinion Mm-hmm. it's it's very much and just just based on the way they're standing the way the warden carries himself as he's addressing it's it's uh, very obviously another classic trope in a lot mm. of you know uh, uh prisoner-based films it's like you know this is why you're here this is why you suck and there's nothing you can do but like that classic <laughs> sort of thing exactly. i also like though too too though um it shows the warden's just duplicitous nature where off the bat, he's like, hey, this place is terrible, but if you follow what I have to say and make deals with me, it doesn't have to be as terrible. And I also and I really like how it showcases how the warden, even though he takes his job very, 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 very seriously, he's also very much out for his own interests, which mm. very much makes sense, you know, with what we know about the Fire Nation's, you know, military up until this point. You know, you you definitely get the sense that he is someone who desperately wants to just claw his way to the top no matter what gets in his his way. right up and to the very end really, yeah, that, that matters yes. for the, the how the episode finishes so it's nice to establish that. the whole purpose mm-hmm. of the scene is to jointly introduce i mean he's we've seen him before now but properly establish the nature of both mm-hmm. the warden as the antagonist and as well reintroduce to to viewers um hakoda soccer's dad and we get to see his defiance mm-hmm. his humor his uh his strength of character etc here um so both of those are kind of introduced in the same scene um as the opener for the episode and i think that was very effective yeah. Um, we get the instantly. Inter- de- Sorry, can I? Oh no, no, I was going to say you know instantly defiant, and I was just getting into what, what you were saying. You know, we we Chit saying you know relinks up with with the team, and Sokka goes to you know meet his father, making the same mistake as I said that he made with Suki in the sense of not taking off his helmet when he had goes into the yes. cell to reveal himself. Um, and they even what I love too is like they even call back to it, like whereas Hakoda's like I almost punched you in the in the stomach, and Sokka's like yeah <laughs> yeah you know, I ran I into that five like, minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't learn it's like yeah it's like Sokka just because you you're aware of a, of a plot hole doesn't mean you shouldn't act on it yeah uh. <laughs> um, and the warden inter- at the same time as this interrogates Chitzang who uh, is not willing to immediately yield any information um, and that kind of develops as a subplot throughout the episode um, mm-hmm. he eventually reveals obviously the fact that there's a guard a mysterious guard that's had well, the he- information but not the exact yeah. one which we'll get to um, but Sokka plans with mm-hmm. his dad um, he gives basically just a, a down a download to the dad so he has the context of the episodes what he's going to be doing for the for the next 20 minutes and uh, and catches mm-hmm. up with the rest of the of the uh, group and the, and the viewers um, and then the real kind of um, change in tone and then expectation is the fact that Zuko oh, yeah. runs into May um, because she arrives yeah. and uh, and has a has a nice bit of a not necessarily closure at this stage <laughs> but she she gives her him a piece of her mind and I like that she gets a little yeah. moment to shine which again we don't see very often for May she's neglected as a character in uh-huh. the show before we get into that in more detail I would also just like to point out that when Sokka is planning with um, you know Hakoda 
Hakoda reveals that uh, during his time in a previous prison, he actually met the Kyoshi Warriors, obviously Suki's, yes. um, you know, uh, group. And obviously, I mean, obviously that line was written in for people who were probably thinking up until this point, like, oh, Suki's here. But then what happened to the rest of the Warriors? I mean, I guess it's a little Execution. convenient that Hakoda just so, <laughs> just so, I mean, Hakoda just so happened to be in the same prison. Yeah, the Kyoshi it's, Warriors. it's just but it's keeping like, everything all I mean, neat and tidy fine. for people and, and yeah, like, yeah. Keeping, keeping it explained, hand waving it away which i again i appreciate from the, what we said about the first episode um the fact that they they're establishing the multiple prisons and the different scales of things mm-hmm. so that was all that was all very nice um again it's just still things they don't have to do but they do anyway you know it shows the attention mm-hmm. the detail it's going into but um but yeah may gets uh gets a, gives you a piece of her mind very strong <laughs> scene for her establishes the um trajectory for her growth or her um not even really growth she's already willing to make the choice at the start but her arc throughout this particular um, episode um, mm-hmm. and sets up what's going to be happening in the finale, um, which is basically what all of these scenes are doing. They're just teeing up the uh, mm-hmm. the close of the episode um, quite nicely, if you ask me. Um, we have the mm-hmm. explanation of the plan, new plan, plan number two, to Suki from Soccer. <laughs> um, the lineup with the guards happens. Um, Warden is um, is told the incorrect guard by. Um, by, I keep forgetting his name, Chutzang. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, who's been crafty enough to know that he's these guys are his best hope of getting out. So I like that. Like that, that makes sense as well. But we then get introduction to Azula um, for the episode, mm-hmm. which I'd forgotten how much how strong the one liner was as she closes uh, closes the scene. You know, just immediately gets given the explanation by the guard. It wasn't me. Reads on his face. It wasn't. And the question comes from the warden, how do you know? And it's like, I'm a people person. I love that line. Yeah. With everything we know of her, she walks out the room. There's, we've talked before how she gets all some of the best one-liners throughout the show. And, and this is just another example mm-hmm. of that I'd forgotten about. Um, it's There aren't that many characters that could uh, could walk out with a line like that with that much menace and effect. Um, so yeah, Absolutely. Really and we get the riot. I also love that. <laughs> riot! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like Ch- apparently Ch- Ch- saying he he he's definitely this is definitely not the first riot he's he's yeah, actually instigated. <laughs> I love the fact that the prisoners immediately start beating the crap out of each other as well. They don't focus on trying to get the guards taken care of and punished a bit. They just let's just beat the crap mm-hmm. out of each other. <laughs> or oh, fireworks yeah, into yeah. the sky. Yeah, and even like Hakoda is initially it was the one who tried to instigate. He pushes the guy, but then he ends up pushing the one prisoner who's trying to work on his anger issues, and it doesn't work. Yeah, and, and the, the humor, <laughs> the humor in this episode um, across the board again is has been much stronger for me than than the average one. I, I know I often critique mm-hmm. the humor in, in Avatar, and this is this is where it's, it's one of its strongest instances. And um, following immediately up from this, you've got the guard who was revealed who let the, the people out, and <laughs> the warden shouts, "Who let these prisoners out?" And he's like. I'm just gonna slide along around this corner because uh, soccer, yeah. <laughs> clearly that was my bad. Um, I just uh-huh. find it funny. Um, and then we have the follow up of them trying to work out um, how to get the warden because, of course, Sokka didn't think that through, and that was something that Zuko was mm-hmm. um, a bit a bit frustrated by, uh, leading to one of mm-hmm. the weirdest and awesome, most awesome moments from Suki um, becoming Spider Man as she just literally runs across away across the uh, courtyard of heads and up the wall um some pretty impressive and also frankly impossible acrobatics uh to get to <laughs> the warden very cool moment but uh <laughs> it's it's pushing the ba- mm-hmm. upper boundaries of what they can do in avatar is, and be mm-hmm. believable um but who cares it's yeah fun. um i think we should also point out the fact that like the basis of their plan is you know they're going to capture the warden and take him on to the gondola the other side and uh, they initially, you know, their logic was like, well, if we capture somebody, they'll just cut the line when we're mm. halfway across. But then Sokka is like, okay, but they won't do that if it's the warden himself, because they feel they believe that with a high profile enough, you know, prison, obviously, they the military would want to keep that again, you know, very good realistic planning because if yes. you're going to capture anyone might as well be might as well be the person in charge right yeah and the gag as well allowing him to have that moment later on where he does tear it off and, and or break it off and, and and shout for them to cut the wires you know narratively speaking it teed mm-hmm. that up them him that restriction being in place to start with so he, they couldn't just walk past the guards and him just say no just take the shot or whatever um mm-hmm. yeah they thought it through um and all of this yeah. basically just sets up the finale of the episode which is uh which is 
one of the best fights in the show, in my opinion. I, I yes, I hadn't quite forgotten that, I but the, how the, good it was. Yeah, I, 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 it, I remembered it being good, but the details of what, how, and why it's good, I, I'd kind of glossed over over the years. And oh my god, is it such yeah. a struggle? Considering how simple simple the stage is and how constrained they are in terms of the d- dynamic motion they can go for, com- you know, compared to the average Avatar fight, this was such a strong mm-hmm. battle. You've got. Um, the split off of the fights into two kind of duels, which is always satisfying to watch anyway. But then Suki the way versus, uh, Ty Lee and yeah, Zuko, and, very cool, and, and Zuko the, but, and Sokka versus Azula. Yeah, I mean the choreography is is fantastic. The the, the pairing off of um and, and the the kind of cooperation between Zuko and Sokka against Azula is is really fun and engaging. To yes, watch. very very cool to see them kind of tagging each other in and out to, to take the strikes they're doing. But also the animation mm-hmm. alone, like the, the the fights, the initial opening engagement between um Suki and uh, Tai Lee with the with the kind of arm um locks and and the thrusts and pushes and jabs, everything about that was top tier. Like this, they were they borderline core animation um at this stage, mm-hmm. um which Absolutely. was very much and, appreciated. Uh, yeah, and moving into the other fight, like you said, the pairing off. Now you know just to kind of like you know break it down a little. Basically, what they do is like twofold. Like Zuko deflects um. Azula's fire blasts it back at her long range but then when um Azula strikes back and Zuko cancels it out switches Sokka goes in because he's they close the distance now and tries to hit her with her sword and there's multiple points where you see that like Azula not only backpedals but Sokka very nearly is able to hit her and that makes sense because with Zuko taking care of her long range, which, you know, uh, um, Azula is primarily a long range fighter in terms of her bending, um, the strategy on play is very excellent. And it's also a good way to showcase how Sokka's fighting skills, when used, you know, in a, you know, in this way, in a, you know, functional way, can allow him to punch, basically punch above his weight class considerably so because, you know, you definitely get the feeling that this strategy against almost any other opponent would have just flatly. And even, even Azula is like, you know, put on her back foot pretty quickly. And that sort of dynamic between long range, short range weapon, fire bending, it's just all brilliant. And I really just love when they, I love it when they really just get creative with the fight dynamics um, in that way. Also, also because just weapons in general, in terms of fighting benders is often underutilized in my mm. opinion. So the fact that we get reinforcement well, give, that there it's, are it's the tools and uh, styles that can be effective against these people is great. And well, yeah, like you said, and since it is such a compressed area, the mobility is limited, which makes it even more effective. Yeah, and they have a lot of creative little moments, not just in the fighting, but also just getting up to the Gundo in the first place with um, Ty Lee just mm-hmm. running straight across the cable and, uh, and Azula using the hand the handcuff kind of links to propel herself up with the fire bending as well. Just the whole the whole stage and how they get to it and, and the, the fighting and the cooperation. I mean, just on the character level, the fact that we're seeing Zuko and Sokka fight literally back to back and side by side, um, we haven't seen that mm-hmm. before. We haven't had reason to. So this is uh, oh. it's really cool seeing how they they blend together and and and, and meld into this uh, fighting unit. And and again, fantastic animation, fantastic choreography. There's, we've said it before mm-hmm. and we'll say it again a hundred times. Avatar is is top <laughs> tier when it comes to this kind of stuff. And this was a particularly good instance of it, um, especially in this season. Yeah, but the group escape. Um, they obviously the warden starts shouting out the uh, to, to cut to cut the cable, um, and we get the and, they, and and by the way, wait, can, can I just say they cut the cable using a giant saw when <laughs> you would imagine that you would like why don't they just use bolt cutters? It would take a lot less time. Well, not only but that, but the, the fact they're going through the entire link rather than just the cable that's holding it, which is funny as well. But they you know they yeah. need to give also, it needs a, to take a certain amount of time so they can be stopped. <laughs> Sure, sure. But, and also, I mean, even then you would think there would just be an automatic release on the, mm. on what was holding the cable in instead of having to cut it, but okay. <laughs> I know it's, I know it sounds nitpicky, but it's just kind of one of those things that you think about in every which way. Yeah, Z- Zuko damaged the system, that, that, it's fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, I guess so. But like, even then, we should also point out the big, the big, you know, reveals the fact that May is the one who ends up stopping the exactly, guards from yeah. cutting the line. As they're yeah. making the escape and the warden's done his duty and shouts to just cut the cup cable and you know, <laughs> kill him as well. Um, May turns up, prevents it. Um, pretty pretty cool little fight for her as well. I love the combat role as she's rolling behind cover and still um, shooting off the kunai in the direction of the, uh, the guards. Mm-hmm. Like, the, and we cut from that to her being very much surrounded immediately following this. But character-wise, mm-hmm. outside of the awesomeness of the action, Azula's um, 
uh, kind of rea reaction to this, her realization of what's going on, the confusion, initial confusion, followed up by her arrival down to the to the platform, um, and then the, the obviously her getting ready to fight May actively herself. This is the first domino, particularly when Ty Lee joins in and sides with my, uh, with mm -hmm. uh, May. Um, this is the first domino of Azula's madness. This is the first chink in in her kind of persona that we've seen up to this point, where she's properly shaken. If and if this if this foundation is going to fall from beneath my feet anything could you know these are the mm -hmm. obviously and it's, you can't really blame her in, in terms of what she's expecting but the nature of her father um these two are the closest people to her in the world outside of her brother um mm -hmm. and now they've be be quote unquote betrayed her it's not really betrayal against her <laughs> but from her perspective it certainly is um yeah everything else now is just not reliable and she's aware of that and she's fearing that and it's it's probably shakes her and, and this is the first time we see the setup for what's going to ultimately manifest mm -hmm. throughout the finale um, and uh, just to, just to add on to that too, the 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 depths of how betrayed she's feeling because I'd actually forgotten this until I'd rewatched this episode for this review. But when she makes to strike May, she's doing the lightning conjure mm. pose. Like oh yeah, she was she's not messing around. And she was she was literally preparing to murder May because May's not dodging that at close range. So if it wasn't for Ty Lee, May would have died in that moment and the fact that she instantly goes for that even despite mm. her her you know her feeling betrayed is like like i actually had forgotten that until i rewatched it and i'm like whoa like that was it again it's just a great way of just like you said you know first domino of madness the fact that she is literally about to murder one yeah. of her closest friends just um right up the bat and um again little animation details like that are always great to see I love the dialogue as well. Um, the actual line that May mm -hmm. gives, you know, you miscalculated Azula, which is a jab in of itself against someone like Azula. Mm -hmm. um, but but the the whole <laughs> the whole uh, I uh, I I love Zuko more than I fear you, and and the, which is a great line by itself. But the follow up from the 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 first like hint of unstable Azula we see later on with a no, you miscalculated. You should have feared me more. Mm -hmm. Like that is such yeah. a unhinged and and brilliant line to have thrown back leading straight into that like you say that kill shot that she's desperately reaching for um it was all just fantastic basically it was really good drama to end the episode on and, and kind of tee up what's going to be happening in the later episodes for the finale um yeah, this is the last and, time uh, we see azula until the finale episodes now uh no we see her we we see her at the oh wait i think anyway no, you're right. Because she's not in the Embryo's no, no, Players we, episode, is she? Or all the No, no, we see we see her those. we see her at the beginning of, of the next episode when she when she Oh yes, of course we do. Couple. Yes, of course we do. Yes. Sorry, yeah. I I just seen that. I should remember this. <laughs> yeah. That which is another epic that fight we'll get to talk about in a moment. Until, until the finale. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But after that, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um so yeah, well well pointed out. Um but either way, that that the whole gets, situation yeah. is teed up and it's a very cool way to end this episode because uh it's it's a step away from the actual um you know, prison break scenario and if, if you're if you were a re viewer at this stage getting bored of that then you can enjoy this instead it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a new switch and yeah. update that people would probably not be expecting a twist for the end um absolutely and after that we get the escape pro properly as they take the war balloon away and the family are reunited you know so soccer and uh mm -hmm. um Akala get back to katara who is very happy to find out this news toff is a little bit disappointed about the very lack of sweet, meat yeah. uh been acquired but you know <laughs> can't have everything the meat of family <laughs> <laughs> the greatest meat of all, Suki and Hakoda, and uh, and, uh we get Chit saying, being like, Oh, hey, I'm new, <laughs> yeah, like, hey, wow. yeah, um, <laughs> straight, straight to the point on that one, <laughs> but 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 that's the uh, two parts, that's the boiling rock again, as we said before, not anything to write home about in in, in the context mm -hmm. of Avatar's quality, obviously, it's still right. two great episodes by the average, the average um cartoon, but uh, but it's got some high moments, it's got some really cool drama between the small elite team, um, and set up for the ending, as we've just discussed great fights yeah. great animation real solid groundwork laid down for for what the mechanics of the episode are form formulaically and uh and as well as that um if you're a massive fan of the prison break kind of genre and style then you'll probably get something out of this you know within the context of avatar so yeah um pretty good pair of episodes absolutely i mean every everything it it doesn't do that's like um earth shattering it does incredibly well in terms of just you know, subtlety, you know, world building and progression. And, and for that reason, I think, like you said, and even if, you know, the prison break genre isn't necessarily the first thing you're interested in, it still does these tropes in a way that makes the episode, you know, very entertaining and one that, you know, it does everything that it needs to do in the best way it realistically can for the most part. Pacing issues aside, which I think is, 
I, I, I think pacing is probably our biggest, you know, mm. misstep issue personally with, with these two episodes. Um, I agree that with some restructuring, it probably could have been cut down into, you know, one episode, maybe give or, maybe just one that was like maybe two or three minutes longer than usual. But by that same token, you know, that doesn't take away from the fact that what it does do well, it does extremely well. And it's really nice to see, you know, it's great to see Suki again, get, it's great to see Hakoda again and, you know, getting that, you know, all those moments with, you know, Sokka and uh, Zuko, you'll have a good time regardless. Yeah. Yeah. To clarify when we mentioned about the plotting uh, and the pacing issue, it flows perfectly fine. It's just, like you said, it, it mm-hmm. has material within it that could have been cut down to make this. I, I always considered back in the past that it could have been an, an episode and a half. And we, instead of having the epic fight scene opening up to Southern Raiders against Azula with the, with the um, wobbly unit scenario, we could have had that as the second half mm. of that second episode then with the boiling rock is like the, the, the new twist of, oh, we didn't just get away. She's right here on our tail. And, with, and you know, the, the expectation of having escaped is lost ah. there. That could have been played into a bit nicely, which which didn't need to happen for the sake of boiling rock at all. But that what that would, would mm-hmm. have done is give you more time to spend on Dark Atara and with southern raiders so i I always consider that as an option um because there there's a lot a lot of that episode is taken up by the fight scene at the start so but you know yeah it is what it is um and before we get to that when we get to it yeah looking forward to that one that's gonna be a really great one um absolutely much to talk about there yes but this has been the boiling rock um i am Mm -hmm. callan and i still don't have an outro (laughs) evan over 95 we hope you guys enjoyed we'll see you guys later goodbye